it smells so good. It smells lovely. I got a new Egyptian incense at the store yesterday and it smells so good. And I have completely forgotten how much incense smells wonderful and it's like filled the entire house with the smell it just smells fantastic i highly recommend the incense ah oh, it smells good gosh you know when your office smells good like your creativity smells good too no because like when it's it's like a thing like if you feel good and your office is clean and things smell good then like your creativity smells good Hey everybody, I'm David Bird with Reality or Imagine and welcome back to the channel and for episode three of The Shop Vlog. Anyway, I'm gonna stop that because I should just never dance on camera. So welcome to Shop Vlog. Shop Vlog is where we're going to be editing some images and we're gonna be showing you the different highlights through the entire process. It's not a full tutorial. It's just a little bit of an adventure as we go through the process. I'm either gonna be editing images for clients or for other projects. And speaking of other projects, that's what we're gonna be editing photos for today. I'm gonna to be making a video for this channel coming out soon reviewing Skylum Software's Luminar 4. I had made a video review of Luminar for a few months ago during the Black Friday insanity of shopping where everyone was looking at the software because it was cheap and they're also looking at doorbusters and computers and cameras and they're like, hurry up, Brenda, we gotta get that doorbuster before Karen takes it from us. I reviewed it then and I took a look at it because the biggest thing that it was being marketed for at the time is one, it's a photo editor. It's not a uh, just standalone little enhancement. It's a full photo editor. Number two, it was being advertised because of the sky replacement option within it. And I looked at the sky replacement stuff and I was like, yeah, it, it, it does it, but it introduces some problems. And I didn't look at most of the other things for photo editing purposes because I would use Adobe Photoshop for photo editing and not third party programs. However, they have put out some updates. So I'm updating my reviews of Luminar 4 and giving it a fair shake, both from the perspective of the sky replacements, as well as using it as a photo editor, because it is marketed and billed as a photo editor. It's not marketed and billed as a Photoshop killer, but it's marketed as a photo editor. So I'm going to make a series of videos for this channel so that we can look at it as a photo editor. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, then I would encourage you to do so and help this channel grow on the YouTube. When you do that and subscribe and like these videos, it lets YouTube and the vast audiences on the YouTube know that they can find great content, both in photography and in Adobe Photoshop and other programs and other reviews and so forth. So please consider liking and subscribing. All right, so let's go into to Adobe Bridge and take a look at the images that we're going to be working with today and preparing for this Luminar 4 review. So I'm going to first do a review where I will review the sky replacement option in Luminar 4. So I decided to revisit some images that were photographed a few years ago where we photographed for the very first time in the Imperial Sand Dunes in Southern California. It was the first time that I was ever there. It features, the whole photo shoot features this wonderful talent. Her name is Miss Fearless and you can see all of her amazing, beautiful work by following the Instagram link below. So we had went to the Imperial Sand Dunes and I had this specific vision in, in my mind of what I wanted to do. And we rented this beautiful parachute dress from Alice Andrews Designs. Again, you can see all of her amazing work, which I highly recommend that you take a look at her amazing work by following the link at the bottom of the screen. So we rented this parachute dress. We drove down to the Imperial Sand Dunes. It takes like four hours to get there. This is a little bit of a photography tip first before we dive into the Photoshop's. It takes four hours to get there, and I was generating images right and left. I've been thinking about images for weeks before we did the shoot. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted the sun to be a powerful light source within the scene, so we got there and made sure that we were there a couple hours before sunset in the golden hour, and then I was going to bring one light, one artificial light, a strobe, to illuminate the scene and create some different options and images. So when we got out there, it's my wife and I, and Miss Fearless and her husband. And we walk out, the wind's not really blowing that much. We get out into the sand and we very quickly realize a couple of things. One, when you walk in sand, you leave footprints everywhere. And that's murder to Photoshop out. Unless you bring a tripod and you get plates of the scene. So you position somebody into a frame like uh, that one, this one, this one, that one, this one, this one looks good too, that one. This is a beautiful frame. But if we walk into the sand, we're gonna get footprints. So I very quickly realized I need to tell the model to like walk way over here, then walk down and then walk back up and then walk directly into the scene so your footprints will be hidden by your body. 
but I didn't bring a tripod. So I couldn't get plates within the scene and I couldn't use my strobe because to get the strobe close to her means the strobe has to be in the scene, which means people have to walk into the scene and set the strobe. Footprints everywhere. It was ruining that beautiful flow to the sand. And it was just like this, like look at all that beautiful texture, the way the light's hitting it and creating those highlights and shadows. So we see the three dimensions of the sand and footprints would ruin it. As you can see, there's footprints all over here footprints back here. I couldn't pop a flash right here because it would create issues. Now I simply could stand there as a photographer with nobody in the scene, look at it and go, this looks pretty, set up the tripod, get bracketed shots, which means you set your camera for even money of an exposure and then you get an exposure that is one stop above and one stop below and then brought everybody into the scene so I could Photoshop in all of the sand. Didn't bring a tripod, didn't think my way through it. Number two, wind is blowing and sand is blowing everywhere. It's getting everywhere into our eyes. My Canon 6D, that was my workhorse camera for a long time, is coated in sand within like 20 minutes. And I didn't bring anything to clean it, didn't think. So I've been a photographer for a very long time. Here's my suggestion, here's my tip. Here is why you should watch the entire shop vlog because there's gonna be tips about photography and we're gonna do some really cool stuff in Photoshop today. When you go to a shoot, Something you've never done before. I've photographed models. I have photographed parachute dresses before. I've never put all of that together in a place like the Imperial Sand Dunes. I get so excited to create the artwork. I don't think through every contingency. And then when I'm there, I'm watching the sun begin to set. And I'm like, gotta hurry, gotta hurry, just get over there. I'll Photoshop it. I'll just Photoshop. I'll just, I'll just put it in the Photoshop. I'll just fix it in post. And I couldn't. No matter how much I worked with it, I spent hours just trying to retouch footprints in the sand instead of editing the piece of art itself. So when you're in a new situation and something goes awry, take a step back and do this. Go and then ask everybody around, is that Egyptian incense? And they're gonna go, yeah, it doesn't smell good. Take a deep breath, settle yourself, and see your way through it. So ultimately I decided to ditch the flash because I had to and I got shots like this knowing that there would be some things that I could overcome. But here's a funny thing. There's a thing called a reflector. The reflector could have stood at distance and used the sun to bounce light back into the scene. Didn't bring a reflector with me. So this shot, gorgeous, we get to see the sun but we needed a little bit more light onto her so we could capture the sun flare, we needed a strobe. I brought a strobe with a 33 inch beauty dish and there was no way that it was going to throw enough light unless it got closer to her. Even at full power, it would not throw enough light to overpower the sun unless it was close to her. So at this point, we decided to simply turn her into the sun, which is not a good thing. But the sun was setting, we could get that nice golden color, and we could work with the scene in that regard. And that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna be preparing this, this one, that one, this one, that one, this one. This is the base image. And we're gonna be preparing this file to use this image in the tutorial for Luminar 4 looking at the sky replacement because obviously we need to look at replacing the sky because I could pull the highlights out in Photoshop. I could do a bunch of different stuff, but since Skylum is, uh, and Luminar 4 is marketed as being able to change the sky like that, and it's supposed to be perfect and beautiful, I thought, let's prepare the file for that. So what I wanna do though, is I like this base pose, but I don't like her hand. It just looks a little funky and weird. It's just like dangling and hanging there, like, hi, ah, I'm right here, I'm the right hand. So I want to use this hand and this arm and bring it into this image. And then, uh, well, maybe, no, maybe, um, Oh, no, that picture is out of the focus. So no, we cannot use that image. Whoopsies. So we'll be using this one with the hand, but I'm going to prepare some of these also for more potential uh, use in the video for Luminar 4. However, I'm going to use this one. I wanna use the fabric right here from this image and put it into our base image because the dress is pretty, you know, just sitting there. And keep in mind, all of these footprints are from her husband coming into the scene to lift the dress and shake it. But like every time he did, I could see him and I'm like, well, I gotta shop that out. But then to shop it out, I don't have any plain sand and you're causing more footprints. Just for nobody get in the picture. You just stand right here. My dog is sand in my eyes. It's getting in the camera. Ah! So let's take our base image into the Photoshops. This one, that one, yeah. Okay, we're gonna take these images 
and we're gonna work with them in Adobe Camera Raw and move all the way through to the finalized beautiful picture that we will then use for a tutorial on this channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let's look at this image and we're gonna process this image and go through a bunch of different stuff and then we're gonna sync all these other images together with that one. So starting with the lens corrections, we'll hit that one and uh, that brighten up the scene just a little bit by removing the vignetting. I'm going to bring the highlights down so we get just a little bit more substance into them. Not much because it's not really that overexposed. It's even exposed on her, uh, obviously, to a degree. But uh, if we look at the histogram, not so much. All right, so let's take the shadows out just a tad. Let's bring the overall exposure down just a couple of points, like uh, negative 0 0.15. Let's increase the white points to give it a little bit more of that crispness in the highlights. And then let's increase the black point so that it saturates the luminosity values with a better tone. Good, I like that. It's the same thing by increasing the whites. All right, good. Uh, give it a little bump of texture, a little bump of clarity, and a touch of the dehaze. Dehaze to me is like contrast 2.0. Uh, it's meant to, you know, dehaze the image, but it's like contrast 2.0 to me. So the rest of that looks good. So now we need to sync this change here that we made to this one file to all of these files in the film strip. So I'm simply going to hold the shift key and click the bottom most file, which selects all of them. And then I'm going to hit alter option and the letter S for synchronize. This is just like how you would synchronize images in Adobe Lightroom. That pulls up the synchronized dialogue. We can check all of these different boxes. If we want those things to be synchronized or uncheck them if we don't, I want them all to be synchronized. I'm going to hit OK, and now it makes the change to all of these so they are all have the same settings. Now with all of them selected, I'm going to open images in directly into the Adobe Photoshop. Rad, so it's opened all the different files. Let's start working by pulling in the hand of this one. Now, I'm going to use the quick selection tool to simply make a quick selection of her hand and her forearm, and maybe a little bit of her chest and so forth so that we have some material to blend if needs be. However, I don't want to just simply make the quick selection directly to this image because when I do it's going to put a mask over it and show me just this hand but it's going to take all of this picture with it when I transfer it over into the new image I just simply need the hand and the arm I don't need to add more data to my original working file so I'm going to use the marquee tool and just make a rough selection like that then hit Control J then with the move tool, V for the move tool, I'm going to hold the shift key and drag this new layer that was created over here when I duplicated that selection. I'm gonna drag this up over to our base document. There you go. And now I've only added just a little bit of information to the dialogue instead of adding an entire layer, even though I would put a layer mask onto it. So at this point, I no longer need this document. So I'm going to go ahead and close it and not save it because we don't need to. Now we have our little hand here and our little arm. And boy, does that look creepy. It's like Vishnu. Yeah, right? Or Kali. Kali? Vishnu? We have the arms? Kali? Vishnu? I'm not sure. Uh, let me know in the comments which one it is. Thanks. All right, now I'm going to uh, simply make a selection by hitting W to activate the quick selection tool. And then I'm just going to tap and drag and we're getting a nice little good selection. That's good enough, we just need the hand. And then I'm going to put a mask over this, which will mask out everything else by simply clicking the layer mask icon here at the bottom of the layer window. And when I do, now we have our hand. But one of the things to always be cognizant of when you use the quick selection tool is that there are some pixels that can maybe have been selected even though you didn't visually see it you have to be careful that it obviously did because remember it went up and selected part of her bodice and dress and then it brought it into the scene so a good way to see that and to see what needs to be taken away immediately so you don't miss it is to hold alter option and click the layer mask icon itself all of these little white squiggly lines those are actual pixels that are visible so if I hit B for brush and I'm going to use the left and right bracket keys to make my brush bigger or smaller. I'm going to paint black onto this mask at 100% flow and opacity to simply get rid of those little phantom strands of pixels. You can see it all the way at the top too. And that was just simply because the quick selection tool jumped up and tried to grab all of that. And then we uh, went into reductive mode with the quick selection tool and said, nope, we don't need those. But it left those little few strands of pixels. Now I'm going to hold alter option and click the layer mask again to go back into the normal view. You. Control and minus or command and minus to zoom out. Now we need to simply merge this hand and make it look like it's sticking out from her body. There we go. Let's bring it in like this. And the skin tones are just a little bit different, but that's okay. 
uh, not the end of the world. There we go. I just need to match up that curve right there. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna make sure that my opacity for my clone stamp is set to 100 and my flow is set to 3%. I want it to be at 100. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to come over here and sample this area. Why? Because this can became, become a recognizable pattern. And I don't want to clone this same little dune right here to be right there because it's too close to one another. It's a recognizable pattern. The audience may pick up on that. So if I come all the way over here, my hope is that they won't put it together and see. So since I, I'm going to hit alter option to make a selection of that dune because I want to make a straight copy all the way across. And then when I do, if Photoshop is giving me a live view of what I'm actually going to be copying. So I'm just going to match up the perimeter, uh, the line of the, the dune, the new one, and just start painting over and then I'm going to reduce the size of my brush and come in fill it in just a little bit like that down and make up a new dune all right so zooming in just a little bit more right up here we need to make sure that we clean some of this up with the new phantom hand B for brush change to black paint with pure black change the flow of the brush to 100% and just make us a nice little smooth, clean line like that to make sure it all looks good. Now I'm gonna to come to the background layer, our base layer, I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool, and I'm going to just clone in the dress to cover up her existing part of her arm that we could see in the original photo. And then there we go. Controller command zero to zoom all the way back out. And now we have a new hand. Let's get the dress. Let's get the dress. Let's go get that beautiful dress. So this one, same concept. We're going to come up and do the marquee tool. We're going to make a selection of what we need. Controller command on the letter J to duplicate. Hit V for the move tool. Hold shift. Drag it up to the tab and let go and it puts it down and obviously these are different sizes But that's okay because I'm just looking for the material of the dress itself So I'm gonna move it and then I'm going to hold alt or option and come to the rightmost corner I have the show transform controls activated So while on the move tool show transform controls I can hold alt or option and I can resize all points at once and I'm going to try to get the picture to roughly match up to see the size of her foot and then make sure the waist comes up somewhere to a degree that kind of fits the overall parameter right there. And that looks pretty close, pretty close. I think it looks good. So I'm gonna hit enter to accept the transformation and then I'm gonna bring it over and then match it up. Now I'm gonna reduce the opacity just so I can see underneath and kind of position the dress where I want to just shop it in. I think right about there, I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that we get a more even flow. This is the waistline, and here's the, the leading line of the dress, and it's leading down this way. So that's why I rotated this layer so that the dress would match that flow. If it didn't, and it was the other way, we're going to have a line that we can see here that's leading the line here with her shoulders the way they are, her legs, her hips, the dunes, they're all going in this line. But then if the dress were to come like this, it, it, it goes against that, it goes against the natural flow. This is just a little minor design thing. Is somebody gonna look at this picture and go, oh my gosh, look at the flow of the dress. It follows all the leading lines. He must be brilliant. No, that's, they're not most likely going to look at that. But what does happen when you don't make changes like that to your photography and to the work that you're doing inside of the Photoshops is that there's just just elements to it that just don't have visual harmony. And when enough of those build up, people look at the picture and they're like, oh, that's pretty. Nice dress. Interesting sand dunes. I bet you got sand up your... Now that we understand what that is, I'm going to put a uh, layer mask onto it and I'm going to invert the mask so that we have a hide all mask. So I'm gonna make sure that my foreground color is set to white, paint at 100% flow and opacity and bring it into the scene paint down until we start to see the original edge pop into it. There we go, pretty. Now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm going to hit W for the quick selection tool and select the dress itself. Now I can invert the selection by hitting Control, Shift, and I or Command, Shift, and I. And now I can paint out here by painting black to take away, but it will preserve the dress so I can get rid of all of those areas where I went outside the lines. Let's make sure that it matches down here. Uh, while we're on a low flow of 10%, let's just paint some white to start revealing this and just feather it in just a little bit. Again, just a tan so that there's no even 
uh, obvious areas. Control, Command, and the number zero to zoom all the way back out. And we have replaced her arm so that it's more pleasing. We have adjusted the dress so that it follows the leading lines of everything else, and it all looks good. And I also just realized now that the dress covers up the dunes in the background where we photoshopped out the arm, so whoopsies. And now let's start working with uh, some obvious things, which are the distractions in the background. I'm going to hit the letter J, and I'm on the Spot Healing Brush, and I'm just going to simply get rid of a couple of things. The Spot Healing Brush uses Content Aware and samples in the areas surrounding, and I'm going to try to use it to get rid of all of these footprints, or just a few of them. Uh, I can't get rid of all of this through here. I know. I've tried. Uh, because there's just not enough material to sample with. The little ripples in the sand back here, they're smaller, they get bigger as they get closer to the camera, because that's a thing, things that are further away and the camera are smaller, things that are closer, they are bigger, right? So uh, that's a problem. Let's zoom in and uh, we're gonna get rid of this person who was driving away and have the audacity to drive on the road in the background of my photograph. I rented the dunes today, they belong to me. So all of that looks pretty good. Um, let's work with some color now. So before we do any kind of frequency separation, we gotta work with the colors. I'm going to go and do a color balance and I want to go to, we'll stay on the midtones. Let's move this so we can actually see. On the midtones, let's introduce just a little bit of yellow. Yeah, let's play the right. Midtones were the right choice, I think. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit of blue because there's just a little too much yellow into her skin from the orange. Um, I don't wanna give it uh, any red. Cyan is gonna try to balance it out just a smidge more. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, this is gonna be, no, green's wrong. We need that hint of magenta in the skin because we need to, to have harmony with all the other existing colors. We just didn't need to have that smattering the way it looked. Let's, let's pull it down just a little bit more toward the magentas. Let's go to highlights and we'll give it another touch of blue, which should be softening. Yeah, it's mainly in her leg, but that's okay. There we go, a little touch of the cyan. Yeah, we're getting it back to a pleasing color now. And then just a little bit of magenta. And now finally into the shadows, just a touch of the blue. There we go, and a little touch of cyan. And what are we doing here? Well, let's think about it. If there's too much red in the image, and there's too much yellow into the image, and it's got this weird little tint of green, I'm simply doing the opposite to try to balance it, color balance. If color is too heavy in one color, do the opposite of that color with whatever the controls that you have. So I'm gonna invert the layer mask because I don't want it everywhere else. I just want it on her skin. And then I'm gonna be painting white with uh, my foreground color onto her face and reveal this smooth effect of a simple shift in the colors. And we'll just paint on her skin with all of these different new colors that we want into the scene. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit Control or Command Zero. And now let's take a look before, after, before, after, zoom in. Before with the yellow and her skin and now it's just a subtle shift, but it's a good shift. Now let's do just a minimal amount of frequency separation, 16 bits. I'm using the median noise version. If you don't know how, oh, not add noise, filter, noise, median. I can't walk into your gum at the same time. Uh, six is too much, let's go to three. Three is good, hit okay. If you don't know how to use frequency separation or make the action to populate the different layers, then check out the videos above because those videos will show you uh, how to make the action and how to use frequency separation and what it is. So let's continue the action and populate the rest of the layers. There we go, that all looks pretty good. And uh, let's look for any blemishes in the skin that we can remove. And I'm gonna speed up this part of the video because this is going to be long and nobody needs to see me spend that much time doing it.
Dodge and burn. So let's take a look at before and after. Dodging and burning. Such a powerful process to enhance the three dimensions within the image. Yeah, I really dig it. It's one of my favorite things to do with a portrait image. So at this point, I think it actually looks really good. The image is processed. We've done frequency separation. We brought in the new dress. We brought in the different arm and prepared all of these elements and it all looks fancy and wonderful. And this will be the image that we use taking in to demonstrate the Luminar 4 from Skylum Software in a video that is coming to this channel tomorrow. Tomorrow will debut in the morning on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon on my channel so that you will know not only when that video is live, but all the other videos that are coming to this channel covering retouching and the retouching series, simple education in Adobe Photoshop and well beyond, especially with the shenanigans of the shop vlog. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching today. And until next time, I will see you out there in the world of Photoshop or potentially in the world of the Imperial Sand Dunes and Brought to you by Egyptian Incense. Oh.